Hello. In this second video, what we're going to do is set up the computer so that it's waiting for a key press event, meaning that the program will, will be waiting for the user to press one of the keys on the keyboard, and then when that happens, it's going to respond. Now, one thing you might notice if you worked through the last video is that now all the fields are listed as private. If you happen to be in my younger class where we haven't looked at encapsulation yet, um, you don't have to worry too much about the word private here. If you're interested, you can take a look at the supplementary videos that go into a little bit more detail about the subtleties. But for now, we're just going to set all these to private. And really quickly, private means you can only access these fields within this class. So you have to be within these set of braces. So that first brace and that closing brace there. So what we want to do now is we're going to write a class within a class. And so this, since this second class will be inside of my applet class, I'm going to make it private. And this class is going to be a private class and it's going to be called KListener. So KListener is short for keyboard listener and it's going to implement what's called an interface. And the interface we want to implement is called key listener. Now, an interface, if you click here, we'll see that we can add it. We have to actually import it. An interface is can be thought of as, for now, a, a class that has been written that has a predefined has predefined code to do something. So in this case, there's predefined code that's written that sits in, is designed to listen or wait for a key to be pressed. So the thing with interfaces, though, is that we need to be sure to, to put in very specific methods inside this class. And we can always find those by going to the documentation. So if we go to the key listener doc interface documentation, we can scroll down, we see method summaries. And we see that there are three methods, key pressed, key released, and key typed. What happens is that when a key is pressed, released, or typed, these methods are automatically called. And how that happens, we're not really concerned with. So regardless if you do anything in these methods, you have to put them inside your class that implements the key listener interface. And I'm just going to pause and do that quickly, and then I'll start this back up. So what you can see now is that we have we have this private class, KeyListener, I've called it, which implements KeyListener. And since KeyListener is an interface, we need to include all of the methods associated with that interface. And so what happens is we're going to set it up that whenever a key is pressed, this method here will be called. When a key is released, this method here will be called. And when a key is typed, meaning a combination of both pressed and released, this last method we call. So if we scroll up here, what we need to do is we need to actually activate this key listener. So to do that, what we do is we start by creating a new object. So we're going to say k listener, key listen is equal to a new k listener. So I'm creating an instance of the k listener class, which is right here. And then what I want to say is add key listener. And I'm going to add the specific instance I've created called key listen. So now if I build this, it should build. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and just add some outputs to the screen. So I'm going to go system.out.println. The key is pressed. Here I'm going to do system that print line, the key is released. And here I'm going to have a key is typed. So if I build this file now, and I run this, again, nothing's happening here, but notice when I press a button, we see 
if I press the Y button, you can't see this, I push the Y button down and it says the key is pressed and it keeps telling me it's pressed, but as soon as I let go, it tells me the key's been released. So now, this program is designed to respond when I press the keys on the keyboard. And in the next video, we're going to use this to set our Boolean variables as needed.